Very kind of you. I, I don't assume for a minute that um, I'm the reason you're here. <laughs> Good evening, friends, and welcome to the Pettisville High School Theater. We're glad you're here. And uh, my name is Dwayne Beck, in case you didn't know that. I'm the choir director here at Pettisville and have been for several years. Um, and we're so glad that you joined us tonight as we welcome a girl named Tom back, back home, really. Um, tonight's night for us to just hear the stories of their life on the road, um, to see some videos, and and get a little glimpse of what uh, their life was like, you know, backstage. And so this is your VIP backstage pass tonight. Um, Y'all got one. Becca told me I'm supposed to say that. At the end of the program, there will be a photo op for you uh, all if you want to. We'll ask you to stay in the theater uh, if you'd like to do a quick uh, selfie with a girl named Tom backstage. And uh, if you need to go, we understand, and you can feel free to um, exit out these doors. But please, if, you, if you'd like to um, take a picture, please stay in the theater, and we'll, you know, we'll give you instructions, but we'll make a line up this side and up on the stage, and you can say a quick hi and get a quick photo. I think that's all of the housekeeping we need to uh, take care of. Oh, this will be videoed and uh, uploaded to Pedestal's YouTube channel, so don't feel like if you don't get a video of something you wanted to see that it's lost forever. You'll be able to look at it late, uh, later in the comfort of your home. So just enjoy the night. We're going to do it. I'd like you to please help me welcome Girl Named Tom. before the beginning, even before Girl Named Tom, because as you know, we've been performing on this stage and um, around the area in different ways long before we ever thought we would be a band or musicians or anything like that. And Mr. Beck knows a lot about this. Anybody, this was the first performance ever on this stage. Yes. We were very honored. There I'm yelling at Joshua. Not much has changed. <laughs> Uh, that's like the only chance I get right there. Is that your real beard? That is my real beard, yes. No. It is real hair, though. It was very itchy. Um, that was, what, show, what show was that? That was Fiddle on the Roof. I'm Tevia Josh's model, Ken Zoyle. We were super excited when Pentacle got this stage. Um, and I think you just keep improving it and bringing more life to it, so keep it up. Um, that this was Pirates of Penzance. Joseph. Josh was Joseph, and then made some technical dream note. Hey, yo. I was Tuck Tim in The King and I. We couldn't find a Godspell picture for some reason. I know. 
So lots of stage performances, and then our four, first tour ever. We would go <laughs> down to Indianapolis with Noteworthy, and uh, so here's a little clip. Oh boy. So we had sung a lot, and we had made a lot of music, taking piano lessons, singing in JCS, Noteworthy, and on this stage. But we hadn't done a lot of singing together, just the three of us, um, until Mom had this wonderful idea to start a band. And uh, we kind of took that idea and ran with it. Um, so thank you, Mom. <laughs> Yay, Holly. Yeah. Yeah. But really, when we started this band, we had no idea what that even meant. Like, what? Even, how do you be a band? And so um, we asked, well, we did know that we had to sing for people at some point. That was part of it. And we grew up in church, uh, singing a lot in church, and we were very thankful for those opportunities. Um, but that was kind of like the only venue that we really knew about. Um, and so we had this idea that well, Dwayne has put on a lot of concerts. And to have our first concert, he's the guy to go to, to, to put, on a, a, put on a show. And we knew we wanted to hit the road, we needed to raise a lot of money um, for our first tour, and um, so we asked Dwayne if he would help us with that, and he really did. We had no idea what to expect, we were really excited, um, but we were also very shocked at the turnout how many of you were, were at West Clinton the night of this? So amazing, yeah. Um, and yeah, when we, we, in our typical Lichty fashion, we were running a little late, and uh, we might have been the last to that gig that night. Uh, we pulled up, and the parking lot was already full, and we were like, wow, it's just so amazing and humbling, the support that we've felt um, our whole time. And right there was our start. And pretty quickly, we started moving on um, to like the winery down the road, singing at Farmer and Julie's uh, and in the area. And then we took this thing on the road. We packed up mom and dad's minivan. And um, we, we got may it. or may not have crashed that minivan on day one of tour. Very first day. <laughs> Ouch. But uh, only made us stronger. We, we just <laughs> kept going. What you, what's not pictured here is we have like a little cooler, uh, so we would literally buy groceries and like make sandwiches in our car as we were traveling. Uh, we had a tent with sleeping bags, and um, yeah, we would we really kind of roughed it. And we love being outdoors, so our, and our schedule was way more open than it is now. So we would always stop at national parks whenever we could. And uh, thanks, mom and dad, for the. The National Parks Pass that year. <laughs> and for the band. Yeah, and for the band. Yeah. We do say, we think we got a few more tips when we had uh, crunched in Fender because the day we got in that crash, we just kind of bungeed, bungeed it up, the bumper off the ground, and we just kept driving for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to. Um... 2021. We're just going to skip 2020. <laughs> Did not happen. We're not going to go there. Some dark days in there for us. But we all moved into a little house in South Bend, Indiana. And that is where we auditioned for The Voice. It was a virtual audition, kind of like an elevator speech. So we had to impress them in 40 seconds. And um, we sent them little videos. This one, my ears might bleed a little bit. Somehow they thought that was good enough to, to call us <laughs> up. Now 
Why do you believe us when we say we're shocked? <laughs> like, come on. And there were over 40,000 auditions just like that um, for season 21 of The Voice, and so we were shocked. And quickly, we'd like to make a shout out to the English department of Pettisville because they also made us write essays and tell our story and be persuasive as far as like, why we are, um, why we should be considered for something like a, a TV show. So that was interesting. I didn't expect to have to do that. Yeah, so starting from the top. No, no, um, take it. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the call to um, go out to LA and we were so, so excited. Here, we lived in a hotel for over six months. This is Here's six months home. after the first one. This was like six months after our first audition. I mean, in January. This is May. Order, order breakfast over here with cards. <laughs> so you can see Becca's shoes there. Oh yeah, I took a lot of shoes. And it was cool because we had like an adjoining room and it was like COVID time. So the first five days that we were out there, we could not go outside but 10 minutes every day. Um, and and we were just so thankful to have each other because lots of people had to go through those first five days just alone in their room. And they were like going crazy, truly. And uh, so yeah, that was special to be able to have. And grandma asks me all the time, well, how did you cook in a hotel room? And the fact is we really didn't cook that much. I mean, I would sometimes put, get, um, order food from like Amazon Fresh or something and put it in the fridge but we did a lot of like door dashing or food deliveries, and that got kind of old after a while. <laughs> I'm not much of a cook, but um, that, was, that was fun. Here's a big picture of all of the contestants, and in May, we all spent 30 days before getting the chance to blind audition. So you fly out to LA, but you're not guaranteed to go on stage and sing for Kelly Clarkson and all of them. So we made a lot of friends, and it kind of felt like a big music camp. And the talent is just unreal everywhere you turn. It was pretty intimidating and just amazing to hear these people's voices. This was a common day at the park. Chicken strips tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. Michael loves her chicken strips. That that man that you heard singing, that John Legend song, he didn't even get to audition for the voice. So like that just tells you how there's like 90 people out there who can sing so impressive. So while we were out there, there were wardrobe appointments, tons of tons of interviews and rehearsals with voice coaches and all of that. So here's a little rehearsal. And at any point, we could be told, you're going home tomorrow. So, sc so scary. So that, that's the first time we stepped up, foot on that stage. Um, and it was the week of the blind audition. Um, but just imagine us stepping on that stage for the first time, and I don't know, it's really hard to describe how wild and unearthly it feels. Like Star Wars. It kind of feels like yeah. going into a battleship. And it's like a big battleship, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes the show can make it look like people are just walking off the street and auditioning. And I was surprised, that's not how it goes. Here's the day of our blind audition. We finally made it to the point where we could audition. Back here, we can hear their voices. We're fifth. It went Haley, Aaron, Bella, Manny, Rolling Tom. So, that's a little spoiler. Yeah. Because if you watch the season, we came on first. 
like a wall, right? Like the show starts, the season openers. We were shocked to see that because we actually went fifth. Yeah. So they turned it around. Change up the order a little bit. Change it up. They might not like that we said that. I don't know. <laughs> we can trust you guys. But yeah, this one. <laughs> But this was moments before going on stage, and if you see you saw Caleb's face, he's just like, uh, literally all of it righted on him playing the first notes on the guitar. Like most most people had a big band, you know, to like give him four seconds to get comfortable, but we just had Caleb, and he did such a good job. <laughs> takes us to this moment. Which you can see on YouTube, the full video. show we talk about our hometown and uh, it, we just have so much pride in this place in these movies. There we go. Ooh this is cool. So this is after. Can you just turn more chairs? Suburban that's got its uh, lights on, or what were my like warning signs on? I was in school, in choir class, and the announcements come out. I was like, oh, that's my car. <laughs> but yeah, you can see here that we have masks on, and we COVID tested every day, every morning, like 6 a.m. We had to do this thing called check in to work, and uh, once we had tested, we would have to send our green checks. Um, and I think there was one person that got it, that got COVID, and it looked like, I mean, they had duct tape around the, their, their room, and it was like a murder scene, <laughs> truly. <laughs> it's crazy. And so we have some more backstage clips here. We'll brief, this was like kind of a, a working set, um, and this was just kind of an average day. We'd be walking around Universal Studios, so this is where The Good Place is filmed. It's where a bunch of Westerns are filmed. Like a lot of the Netflix shows that we watch every day, like we would pass their sets every day as we drove onto the lot. Lots of you have questions about wardrobe. And uh, it was like walking into a mall. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Gotta hype her up. <laughs> But yeah, it was like walking into this huge warehouse, just packed full of clothes, and uh, 
Becca would take a little longer than we would to figure out what she wanted to wear. <laughs> well, it was interesting. So tell them about the shopping experience. Did you shop for your own clothes? No, I did not. But I did make a style board of what I typically like to wear. I like to be a glam hippie. And so I explained that to them, and they shop for you. And then they have a whole rack, and you just pray that there's something good on there. <laughs> But they did a, such a good job. They're amazing. And they altered everything to fit you so well. So fun. The boys kind of kind of got hungry after four hours in the wardrobe. We mean that they were yeah, they're, ordering they're, food. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, on this one, this was kind of a day, a, a look at a day of show. Um, we would be up in this room. It was at stage. And we'd get there at like 9.30 in the morning. Um, this is for the live TV. For live, yeah. Everything live changed when we became on live TV rather than the taped. Yep. And so we would get there super early and do hair and makeup. Um, and then there was wardrobe fittings again. Becca was often getting like alterations day of. Um, and because it was just such a quick turnover week to week. Um, there was just so much packed in that everything came down to last minute, like it literally was. Like we'd be practicing in these rooms and until about like five or six at night and then it was go time. And somehow we all pulled it off. <laughs> Henson Studios and recording songs was another awesome part of this experience. Um, so this is, is that Kermit the Frog, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this was such a really professional uh, music studio and it was our first one that we really went to that was this legit. Um, and as you can see, it was such an honor to, to get up way up on the charts, um, on the iTunes charts. and that. It was thanks to you in, in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, here, this next clip is like a little behind the scenes of what it looked like in there. <laughs> Super vibey. That's Bill. Bill Applewood. This studio was designed for Karen Carpenter. She, uh, designed this for her voice, and then there's another st studio where um, We Are the World was recorded. Um, so this is a yeah, very storied recording studio. Yeah, the studio itself used to be a movie studio for Charlie Chaplin. He built it in the 50s or 40s or something. And we did get to see John Mayer one day. Did. <laughs> and then this is just like one of the huge warehouses on Universal Studios' lot. Um, you can see just all the equipment, the green screen back there, and we'd come here to do B-roll, um, which is just like a bunch of awkward <laughs> poses where they're like, okay, now just look nervous for five minutes, we're gonna film you. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> um, they would put the craziest things on that green screen back there. Yeah. And then we would wait for hours in these chairs. There's the guitar sitting there, we're waiting. And then right before we go, to do something, they would put us through hair and makeup touch-ups. And so we, we were constantly getting touched up. Yeah. And I think one day, they knew we were from Pettisville, Ohio, and uh, they, they put like cornfields or sunflowers on yeah. yeah. that green screen. They're like, just dance through the light. And we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then after rehearsals and all this B-roll, um, they would put us these late night slots for interviews. Sometimes we would get to the interview parts and it'd be 12 midnight. And then they'd ask you these deeply personal questions and get, try to get all the tears out of you to make it as emotional and dramatic as possible. And it was successful. I mean, you can see here, we kind of look dead. Uh, 
It's a long day. And there were some really interesting um, parts about being on the show for so long, being in LA. We were away from family and friends for so long, um, and it included a Thanksgiving day that we won't forget. Um, all of us packed into this, this was top 13, I think. Um, all packed in a hallway, eating our Thanksgiving turkey dinners. Um, but yeah, it's really sweet, memorable. Very different though. We were, we were pretty sad this day, I'm not gonna lie. And the turkey wasn't very good. <laughs> and then I put this up because sometimes we still have to pinch ourselves that we actually sang with Kelly Clarkson. Um, yeah, it just blows our minds still. And now we gotta take the spotlight and shine it on you guys because you are the reason that any of this happened. Um, here's a little video of us putting up the first grade and kindergarten classes notes that they, and pictures that they made for us and sent all the way to California. We looked at them every day. Just having that constant encouragement, we could feel the love and um, you surrounded us with it. Both hotel rooms were covered with yes. notes yes. and pictures. They made us smile every day. I mean, we would just read them. I mean, how can you be grumpy waking up to this? You can't. We just can't. Dear Kayla, Josh, and Becca, we think that you did a good job of singing. We like your music. We are so excited that you are on TV and on Team Kelly. Do a good job. <laughs> and best of luck. Many of you probably saw this, so we're just going to short, short clip here. But it's just so sweet um, to receive this. It just really lifted our spirits. because it was like making us so emotional um, to see all of you wonderful people here. Um, yeah, it just meant the world to us. We watched it many times after, after we performed. And here's Caleb telling America about you. Uh, that community means everything to us. Um, from day one, we decided to make this little band. They've been behind us. The, the town has like no stoplights. There's like 500 people there. But on our first show at Little Winery down the road in the middle of Marfields, there was like 300 people showed up. And it's so sad. Their support and love has been unconditional throughout this process, and that's why we believe in ourselves as musicians. And that is just so true. Like, your support, your recognizing our gifts, and um, just that belief has given us such strength and encouragement as we keep this thing rolling. And it's, I can't even express to you how 
Much of these to me. Um, I didn't plan on crying, <laughs> but it's just so special. And we, we would not be holding that trophy if it wasn't for you. So thank you very much. So many of you entered questions, and so we're going to have a little Q&A time, yeah. Yeah, these are some questions. We couldn't get to all of them, but we have some questions that some of you all submitted. I, um, unlike Becca, I did plan on crying. So. <laughs> I should have. Yeah, I've got to bring tissue up here. Um, so these are some of your questions. Um, one of them, somebody says, you seem so close. Um, I really should come last time. How has success affected your relationships? Would you talk a little bit about that? We seem so close. How did or how does success affect our relationships? Um, well, we always say that we've grown up around each other, like since we were babies, like playing in the mud um, with like very few clothes on with our cousins. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like we've seen each other at our best, but also our like very very worst, right? And that continues, and so. I don't think it's changed our relationship. It's, it's, um, has it? To, for me, it hasn't, like. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's pulled us just as close. We've been, we've been super close this whole time. And uh, yeah, we always said, especially during The Voice, to have each other was such a superpower, um, just to be emotional rocks for, for each other. Cause it's a, it's a roller coaster and life is a roller coaster and so, um, yeah, we always lean on each other. Another question is, do you plan to continue your music careers or continue your education to become doctors? That's a great question. The three of us, if you don't know, initially, if you would have asked us in high school what we wanted to be when we grew up, we would have said doctors. And um, that took a little change. I think I can speak for all of us that we want to ride this wave as long as it'll go because we feel so, it feels so right. I don't know how to say it. It feels so right. So you're not just... Yeah. Keep doing what's working. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody wants to know what is the worst thing and maybe the best thing about traveling on a bus. Oh boy. And these aren't school buses, we obviously do. Yeah. The worst thing is living out of a suitcase and yeah. just having to pack and repack like three times a day. Because oftentimes, you know, we're living out of a suitcase anyway, but then you get off the bus in the morning, you just had drove all night, and you go into this little green room, if we had one, sometimes we didn't have a green room, and, uh, and then you, you got to live out of your suitcase for the day, and then put on your performance clothes, and then repack, and then put your suitcase back on the bus. And it just it just got exhausting. Just packing, and there's nowhere and to do laundry, so that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the best thing, we had such a great crew and we loved each other so much. We love each other so much. And um, yeah, it, and being in those tight quarters, it's kind of like college, like being in a dorm room with really loving people. Um, or like camping. Yeah, it's like a long camping trip. Yep. So if you like camping, you would like it, and if you don't, you would hate it. Very <laughs> true. Maybe a related question would be, uh, someone wanted to know, when you come home from being on the road, what do you uh, look forward to? What do, you look forward to? what do we look forward to when we come home from being on the road? Um, for me, it's the, the smell of the farmland and the fields, and just like the wide open, yeah, skies. It's just unlike anywhere else. And it, I, I don't know, it's just that sense of homes that uh, even though the tour bus feels like home, even though Nashville feels like home, it's nothing like the nostalgia and all the memories and love that this place holds. And I would say it too, also, everything slows down when we come home and that's so needed um, for the three of us and we cherish that a lot. Somebody would like to know, you know, growing up in a rural town, small, rural area, what do you see as maybe an advantage or a 
talked about a little bit, but uh, or maybe a disadvantage. Right? Disadvantages of growing up in a small town. I think that this town really taught us how to treat people, and if you treat people well and work hard, you're gonna be okay. And so I think that really, I'm, I don't know if it was because of the small town or just who you are, but that's something I think is a huge advantage in the music industry too, yeah. where it can be really cutthroat and... Uh, and everyone kind of attributes their success to, to authenticity, and we feel like we got that from the small town that we grew up in, in Pettsville, yeah. And then the disadvantage would be like, thinking small, like it's really hard to promote yourself as, a, as a, an artist. And so like, since we came from such a small place, sometimes we, we don't allow ourselves to dream quite as big as what we maybe could. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're changing that, yeah. Louisa, age nine, would like to know if you have ever taken singing lessons or do take singing lessons or if it's just all natural. Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, I think everyone can sing. If anyone says, I can't sing, I don't believe you. Uh, singing is such a wonderful thing. It's such a vulnerable thing. And I think we were all born with a gift. Our parents were wonderful nurturers of, of that gift. And they sang to us as we went to sleep. And then being in choirs, being in piano lessons really helped us um, develop an ear. And singing in church. Church was a huge part. So. I guess there's a lot of lessons all around that we might have soaked in there. And you took vocal lessons took as well. Yeah, yeah I, I think they were maybe wondering if you took study privately. Oh yes, yes we did. Yeah, I did when I was 11 for a year, and then in sophomore year. Yeah. Two. And and on the voice we we had vocal lessons every every week as well, um, and now we're back in vocal lessons in Nashville. Yeah. So that's. Easy. Yes, to both. Yes. That's a right. resounding yeah. Yeah. yes. <laughs> I danced around the bush. Uh, how many hours? How many hours of actually coaching is the way it's worded? Did Kelly give you? That's a good question. Yeah. Actually coaching. How many hours of actually coaching did Kelly give us? Um, per week. At first, it was like thirty minutes a week of coaching, and. Um, and then it, from then it was almost like arranging, like we were arranging together. Sometimes we'd sing songs with her, so it was like a back and forth. And like choosing songs was a big thing. So I would consider that coaching as well, yeah. her helping us choose a song, decide how we want to sing it. Um, and for those things, once we got further into the competition, she gave us her number so we could call each other back and forth and send voice memos back and forth um, for different ideas. And that was special. But for face-to-face -face time, it was like, 30 minutes a week. Somebody would like to know how many concerts you can do a year without, realistically, without using your, losing your sanity. <laughs> so they're assuming you're all sane to start with. That's great. That's a great vote of confidence. 360. Let's have five options. <laughs> no. 360 shows. Oh man, I mean, one thing that I think a lot of people think is now the voice owns us or the voice controls our schedule. And thankfully, that's not true at all. We've hired our own management and agencies to help us get out there like we want to be. Um, and so we can turn down any show that they that they present, but um, we don't want to because we love singing for people. Right now we're shooting for like 100 shows yeah. a year. This it's last year time. we did a total of 95 shows, which felt, it felt like way more than that, but 95. So a piggyback question is, do you have out of those hundred booked already? Do you have any idea or is someone, are you people taking care of that for you? We have March through May yeah. booked for next year. And so we'll be, we'll be coming in this, to this area, I hope. Yeah, we, we will be. We definitely will. That, that won't be through May, but it's already on the books to be in Bryan. Yeah. Bryan will have next summer. And one more question. This was actually asked in lots of different ways and maybe this is something Becca can speak to. This one says, I love your wardrobe, great style, who picked out your clothes for the boys and the tours? You talked a little bit about that, but people want to hear about your clothes. Oh yeah, I love clothes. I always have. Mom used to take me to Once Upon a Child in Toledo and we would thrift all day. Um, while the boys were in the car, 
Not go to Once Upon a Child ever again. <laughs> I wonder if we still have those, but yes. I love um, clothes. I love wearing things over and over again. So the voice let us keep a lot of the outfits that we wore on the show, and I just let's let's keep wearing them, you know? <laughs> Did you hear that, Haven? <laughs> that's a good that's good for all of us. It's good stewardship, right? Yeah. No fast fashion. Okay, well, thanks for submitting those questions. I would like to call um, Superintendent Josh Clark to the stage. He has a couple of presentations. So if you haven't met him, this is Josh, uh, Superintendent of Pettisville Schools. Thank you again. Not for this, not for me. It's good for them. Um, and also, we have a light that's going rogue, and we don't know why. So we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend it's part of this. Experience. So, first of all, I, I just have to say, on behalf of Pennsylvania Schools um, and the community, you, 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 you winning the voice and taking us on that journey during such a, a weird time in, in history, and uh, there's a lot of unrest. You know, there was a pandemic, but you know, we got to come here every every Monday night and forget all that, and and that was because of you. And so we thank you so much for that. We, we very much appreciate it. So Pedestal Schools, we have a we have a nice big collage planned for right outside the theater here. Um, it's still in the works, and we're going to take some photos from tonight too and, and add that. Um, I know you have provided a, a signed poster for that, and, uh, so we're really looking forward to getting that on the wall. I've already talked to Marlene Huber. We got a frame coming. Uh, there'll be a, a nice big plaque out there as well um, to commemorate uh, your experience, our experience uh, along the ride, along the ride with you. So, um, another thing, uh, Dr. Schweitzer, he could not be here tonight. He was really bummed, although he's watching his grandkids in Chicago, so he's probably running all over the place. Um, but he, uh, if you don't know, he is the executive director of the Pennsylvania School Foundation. And I'm going to read something that Dr. Schweitzer had prepared for this evening. I'm going to get rid of what I'm holding and give it to you. So, uh, you may have seen at the edge of the Pettis uh, sorry, you may have seen the signs at the edge of Pettisville honoring the 1991 state, state track championship, three-star general Jeffrey Cruz and girl named Tom. What you may not know is that the recognition is sponsored by the Pennsylvania School Foundation to honor those who, through their accomplishments, earned status or other achievements, have brought honor and recognition to the Pennsylvania School and community. The foundation paid for the original track signs back in 1991. Tonight is my privilege through the foundation, because they're giving me that privilege, uh, to present Girl Named Tom with their sign. So, there you are. He's not done. He's got a little bit more. So, Caleb, Josh, and Becca, we're pleased to present you with the sign that not only honors your outstanding talent and success, but celebrates the class manner in which you have represented your pedestal school and your community to a national audience. We're able to give you this recognition because of what you have done, because of what you have done, but more importantly, we are thankful for who and what you are. Your school and your community are proud of you. May God bless you in all that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Josh, we do. Thank you very much, first off. But yeah, let's just relive this. Speak some all kinds of things. Well, if it wants to load. <laughs> what? Actually, no, we 
as we buffer. Oh, nice freeze frame there. That's a good pose. Kayla giving us the duck legs. Y'all remember that? Pretty unbelievable moment. And we actually brought it with us tonight just to, um, oh wait, can you go to the next one? Yeah. Because we are, we're holding it up there with Kelly Clarkson on national television, and we're holding it right here with you on this Pettisville school stage. But we feel like this doesn't just belong to us. It belongs to you. And so we want to put this somewhere in this school as a thank you, as a way to say we're proud to call you home, and that um, hopefully it inspires future generations to come to follow your dreams, follow your heart. Pettisville's got your back. And obviously, the voice is all about music. So we are going to give this to Duane to say thank you, Duane, for nurturing, nurturing us on this stage and um, really just helping us develop music. And you are doing this for K through 12 every single year, and we just, we're behind you. We're so thankful for you. We wouldn't be where we are today without you and so many kids are so thankful for you. So, this is for Duane. Give it up for Duane. that's a yes. Um, and, and to me, it's um, yet another gift that these three people are giving giving this community. You know, they've given us so much, especially like Josh said, uh, Josh Clark said, a reason to be united and to come together and celebrate when people were arguing and feeling alone and isolated and upset about things. So that was a huge gift. Um, to spread the name Pettisville a little bit farther across the country, that's a huge gift. And this is such a reminder, uh, such a wonderful reminder to people that walk by it. Um, you know, there, there are trophies out there uh, in, the, in the athletic trophy case, and it's great. But for little kids coming on their way to the music class to be able to see this um, and remember that it represents something, you know, something great and, and possibilities. So thank you so much. So we won't just be setting it on a stool, just in case we're <laughs> There'll be a special place for it that's secure and where it won't get bumped off. Um, I think now is the time when you really get to come backstage if you want, all right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we'll ask you again, uh, if you want to leave, that's fine, exit this way. If you want to get a picture and say a quick hi, um, Malia, I think, is gonna come up and help with cell phone. Did, did you agree to do this? Awesome. Billy's gonna come up and <laughs> she's still gonna be like, what do you say? To help with cell phones, you can get your cell phone, she'll make sure uh, somebody takes a picture and we'll um, you jump back to these guys and we'll give you your phone. You can head up these hallway doors. Um, but they're willing to stay uh, to take pictures with anybody that wants to. So we'll make the line. Oh yeah, we have a table back there. The trophy's gonna be on the table in front, so extra. I know you you really wanna be uh, 
taking photos with them, but that's a bonus, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll form a line up this side. If there are those of you with mobility issues, you don't have to go down these steps, no, just come around to these hallway doors and we'll, we'll let you in. So give us a minute to uh, open the curtain, put the screen up, and turn some, maybe turn some lights on. Uh, thanks again so much for coming.